Oui, Kakina. Bonjour tout le monde. Hi, everyone. Thanks, uh, maybe. Uh, well, maybe. Merci. <rire> Merci d'être venu aujourd'hui en si grand nombre. Avant de commencer notre euh, présentation sur le beau minier et ses impacts sur la biodiversité et les populations euh, locales au Québec, euh, nous voudrions euh, euh, faire une reconnaissance en fait, euh, du territoire que nous occupons aujourd'hui. En fait, euh, nous reconnaissons que euh, nous sommes présentement situés sur un, un territoire qui a été occupé pendant des millénaires par... We are currently located on their unceded territory. Euh, présentement occupé par plusieurs nations et euh, historiquement, euh, notamment par la nation Mohawk, la nation Anishinaabe. Euh, Historically, this was a Mohawk and Anishinaabe nation. It's our great pleasure to present to you today the I will do a quick presentation of everybody uh, to my right. And we will explain to you in the next hour and a half, uh, immediately to my right. It's from uh, Long Point First Nation, which is situated at uh, five, six, seven, or eight hours from here. So they did a long road to get here yesterday to come here. They are friends, or my personal friends. And we are very happy to have them here with us. He is accompanied by his wife. She is the directress of the Department of Natural Resources and to his right. He did a few hours in order to get here. He comes from the small nation that's in the Utoway region. He knows very well the impacts of the uh, mining proliferation. To his right is Delphine, who works for SNAP Quebec, who gave us a huge help in the last weeks and months in order to uh, map uh, the sites that we will uh, present. Also, two friends, so Emil is a mining analyst and Rebecca is for myself. I am a spokesperson, also a co-responsible for Mining Watch Canada. I'm also a lawyer, and as it is a big privilege to uh, greet you here today for this presentation on the subject of the mining boom that is currently going across Quebec and uh, its impact on the biodiversity. So, here to inform you our presentation we will talk uh, one by one handing the mic in order to discuss uh, the impacts of these mining if you leave ahead of times and there's questions that you must ask raise your hand and we will uh, try to answer if you see on the screen There's the plan of the presentation. Firstly, we will define the terms that we will use today. We will absolutely uh, be interested in the ancestral rights and it's at the heart of what we will uh, be discussing today. Louis will give us a history of the mobilization in his region in the Utahwe, which uh, goes around this, extends to the south of Quebec. Delphine will speak to us more in details of, uh, with the maps uh, to help. It will talk to us about the limitations 
of the uh, National Network of Protected Areas. Delphine will dive into the aspects. And we will finish with a, a presentation from our friends from the Long Point uh, First Nations talking about what the impact that these uh, accompaniment of the terre will have uh, in Quebec. You see on the screen, there are two graphics. I don't wanna to lose too much time on this. I really want to leave all the room to our friends. When we speak about mining booms, just wanna put on the table right now that it it's not a mining boom for green minerals that we put in parentheses. It is mostly a mining boom for uh, precious metals such as gold, which is number one as uh, demonstrated. However, in the next decades, there will be an explosion on the uh, international boom for uh, so the current boom is a gold boom. It is not about graphite or lithium, which has a very marginal uh, impact on investments. The government's industry are constantly uh, putting forward this image, this image, this green image that is associated with uh, the transition, energy transition. But uh, to this day, that is not exact, that is not realistically what is happening on the ground. So what's a mining claim? It's an exclusive right to explore uh, mineral substances of different order, but that claim is taken without consultation uh, with a local population. Uh, this time in Quebec, there are more than so one mining claim is about half a square kilometer. So currently in Quebec, we have a mining claim area that is bigger than the country of Cuba. The the space that is currently allowed in Quebec for mining claims is a, uh, the percentage. So there's space in Quebec for a space that is over twice of uh, this, the area of Quebec. In the last two years, there's an augmentation of 40% of uh, in notably in the Southern Quebec. As demonstrated in La Nodia, 400%. Utahwe region, 200%. Gaspésie de la Madeleine, there's an augmentation of 139%. Laurentide, 71% extra. Estrie, 63%. Mauricie, 49%. So we're seeing an explosion of uh, mining titles for gold. And all of this, as I've mentioned, without uh, consultations with the uh, the local populations. So this hasn't changed since 1964 and that's what we're asking to change. This mining claim is situated on ancestral land. So Quebec is occupied by 11 uh, First Nations. So these are two pioneers, as demonstrated here, that in the 1930s, almost 100 years ago, have demonstrated to the different prospectors and geologists of the region where were situated the uh, important uh, minerals. 
but those are nations that were uh, taken from. So, the two forces that uh, they demonstrated have been in exploitation for uh, almost a hundred years. Uh, tens of thousands of uh, uh, thousands of dollars. Sont préalables des nations autochtones. Bon. Là, euh, je vous, je vous, sans vouloir me répéter parce que je veux passer la parole à nos amis, on a à l'écran une idée du nombre de lois et règlements qui s'appliquent euh, dans le secteur minier, mais encore une fois, tout ça, c'est construit sans un principe de respect de base, de respecter euh, l'occupation des populations locales, qu'elles soient autochtones ou non. En 2023, à surveiller... In 2023, Just watch the First Nations, Michini Bikak, from the Anishinaabe community, the Lac Barrière, that will bring it to the courts uh, in 2023 to watch. So, this is the uh, harsh reality. It's important that the majority of Quebecers and Quebecers seventy-eight percent of Quebecers and Quebecers We see other statistics. If you're interested, go on our website and you will see the gathering of all the statistics that we are about to show. Also, we will expose you to our account towards the government. We talked to the minister of uh, Forest. What we want is a stopping to all explorations of mining titles. Two is to Actually, municipalities have very limited powers that is only limited to where people live in urban area. We want to uh, expand that to natural environments. The Finn will present that. Now that's been said, there are many technicalities that I don't want to lose you in. We have to see wider than just the mining boom. Here are five spectrums. We want to reduce at the source the mineral imprint. That's number one. We talk about reducing our, our consumption. Those are some values that we bring forward. Protect the environment uh, goes by many. We will talk about a few. Of respect local population. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. Uh, application of uh, the principle of a polluter payer and finally uh, fiscal justice so that we're sure that we stop companies uh, from making profits and then the population live with the consequences of that so this is two weeks ago uh, what we brought to the minister of natural resources and forests We sent her uh, the presentation from today. Uh, we'd like to give the voice to Louis Saint Hilaire, which will tell us about the history of the mobilization in his region. 
Thank you. Can you hear me well? Thank you. I will speak to you uh, really about the impact on the populations. Uh, what concerns us is the region of southern Quebec, more particularly the Laurentides and Lanaudière, and the Outaouais. I am from the Outaouais. As you can see, that's my where I'm from. The region where what we're going to talk about is uh, lakes and uh, wetlands. This is Lake Gagnon. This is where I live for many years. We will then speak of the in minerals for batteries. This is in Southern Quebec and uh, where I live. We will only talk about battery minerals. Little context, we are in a world that lives a dependence to carbon for too long. And if things uh, continue, in the way that they've started, we will probably be heading towards a world that is dependent on minerals. So if we have to replace all the petroleum for, for the minerals, then you can just imagine how many mines uh, that implicates and uh, refineries. And what is currently happening is that Quebec and Canada are are trying to gather the biggest piece possible of this new industry. And evidently, if we base ourselves on history of uh, mining companies that are here for, that have been here for a long time, it, it remains in the sectors that are the most pol pollutant for Quebec uh, currently. And evidently, if we double the size of the mining industry, there are 22 mines in Quebec currently. They're all or almost all in Abitibi and on the North Coast. But in the way it's, we've started with uh, the mining interests, we could imagine that those mines could double in the next five to 10 years that are coming. I am talking to you about the impact on the populations. There are other people here that are more qualified to talk to you about biodiversity and the major impact that that will engender. I will uh, firstly tell you about the region, the Utawa region, Renaudien. Those regions are, after all, the mountains of the Laurentides, and that's the region. That region uh, currently is living great changes. It's a region that's transforming, and it is accelerating with the pandemic. There's an exodus from the big cities to those regions. And those are regions that were beforehand, mostly just the uh, villageature regions. And now it's becoming more permanent residences. For example, Montant Blanc area, uh, it used to be just cottages and now it's over 50% uh, permanent residence and going up. So there is a movement from the South to those regions. At the same time, there's a movement from the North uh, from the minings that want to come down. So we are in a potential conflict of usage major. I'll tell you. So our region are at the uh, forefront of uh, this conflict. I've been speaking about mining industry from the beginning, but you have to understand that in this file, the government of Quebec and the government of Canada are very implicated in the mining development. Uh, this weekend I was reading that Divestissement Québec, 
that there could be investments in 2023 that could go up to 10 uh, billion. And then the province of Quebec could uh, give a lot of that. So there's nine steps to uh, develop a battery in the development chain. I will not describe them all, but one thing is for sure is that there will not be a development of uh, batteries uh, as wished if the first step is not respected. The first step So the governments are promising that there is a lot of minerals and uh, it's been demonstrated to the companies. Okay. On the ground. I will show you the area that I'm talking about. So this is the map of the MRC Papineau. If you see, it's right in the center of a triangle between Ottawa, Montreal, and Montcalm. Therefore, we're not that far from the, the urban areas. And I am personally completely up north. People that are in the south is about, uh, everything here is about an hour uh, from Montreal. So this is close to the, the big centers. There are six million uh, people around this center. We are in an area that's very habited. Now I'll show you in the center of the triangle that I show you, I'm talking to you about this claim. It's situated in this, center of the of the lake in a triangle of lakes of famous lakes well known by populations from Ottawa and Montreal we have the big Lac Simon very well known Lac des Plages and then further north we don't see it's another lake this company has been here for four or five years and have been exploring For now, uh, this claim is bigger than maximum. It's a big claim, but on the scale of Quebec, it's almost nothing. Everywhere you look on this map, you'll what do you see? You see water. It is everywhere, <clears throat> and the wetlands are not even represented on this map. There are many, many wetlands in this area. Other thing to know is that triangle that I was speaking of, it's recognized for being the second zone with the most biodiversity in Quebec. So we want to put a mining industry in that area. That's just one claim, but there are others. Okay, we'll get into reality and that little yellow rectangle, there's a mining project that looks like this. <clears throat> this is a first implementation plan for this mining company. I will show you. There are three, uh, Forces. They go down to 200 meters deep, <clears throat> all the way to the right. That's the uh, planned mountain of uh, tailings. What we don't see on this map is that it uh, encompasses a giant wetland area that is not shown on their maps. All the water you see inside the perimeter will be used for the operation. They're all lost lakes. Uh, to the left is Lac Doré. So you see it's close to a lake and it's a habited lake. I'll tell you more about that. Right now, there are already people that are uh, at the mercy of this exploitation and that are 
dealing with the consequences currently. What you see on this All the way to the bottom, the areas that uh, don't have trees, that's from uh, this summer. That's where the mine will be. And just in the middle, you see Lac Doré. <coughs> there are houses all along the lake. There's about a hundred residents right there. And if you look all the way at the end, you see another lake, it's Lac Simon. <clears throat> we are close to Laximum. There are over a thousand residents in Laximum. There's also a camping from the provincial government. We are where people live. That's for sure. People from Lac Doré, where they live this summer with the third uh, campaign, is that they were getting waken up at night uh, by, by mining equipment. So you can imagine what the, is going to happen when they start digging an area that's a kilometer and a half wide. So this is happening close to the big cities that we were talking about. What is the impact on the watersheds? You see it right in the center, there's a line of the uh, watersheds, two watersheds that separate. Everything that's left goes into Lac Doré. Everything that's on the right is the great watershed in red. That's like a funnel that goes to uh, Lac uh, There's easily 500 residences in that area. And other lakes in that area are occupied if an accident happens. Now, evidently, the promoters will tell you that it, there's a low chance that there will be an accident, <clears throat> but we don't know what will happen, but if something happens, there will be a major impact on the population. We can say that it concerns a lot of people. I will go bigger. Now, this is uh, the map that we, we created. This map is from August 2022. What you see in red, it's all the claims. And the one I'm talking about, those are all the claims in the Laurentian region. I'll try. The claim that I've been talking to you about from before is a, just a small claim. So mobilization, what have we done in regards to this? We started a mobilization. We started from an association from La Gagnon. that was able to associate 10 different organizations from the lake. <clears throat> and we think it's very unique. We work in close collaboration with the municipal elected people in our region in such a way that it was done in the last three years. The pandemic uh, slowed things down, but we were able to have the local uh, local support from the 25 local municipalities. They support us and they have the same demands as us. And with time, we re are able to have uh, the uh, support of uh, the local MRC. So our requests were <clears throat> the the union of municipalities of quebec will have a 
discussion of this on the 26th of January. Uh, environmental groups are currently building a greater coalition. We saw a strong presence in the media and there are more things coming. So in resume, there are two blocks that are uh, confronting each other, the populations and the civil side. The attitude of the government until recently was that the connections were broken and we didn't have any capacities to speak with the Minister of uh, Natural Resources for more than a year. The doors were closed. They promised us publicly to meet us, which they never did. Local, we talked to minister, the minister like Rodrigue discussed and they've shown us that there's an opening to dialogue but it's very preliminary in discussions is this just happening with us no it's also happening in europe it's happening in the united states populations were able to stop uh, expansion with uh, major uh, players rio tinto was ex expulsed from serbia in Portugal, populations were able to it's not a local phenomenon, it's a world phenomenon. The mining companies, the governments thinks they can go anywhere without the consentment of the local populations, but now the populations are showing otherwise. I would like to finish by saying two things. Firstly, we hear a lot uh, from the mining industry say that we are people and what they're saying that what they do is good for the environment. Those are, that's the argument that they use. What I'm saying and what we're showing is that we're we're not in a local, it's not a local thing, it's exploding. I talked to people just earlier, they said they're discovering new claims, five new claims here, six new claims there. We're, as far as the environment, the answer that they give us that it's good for the environment, what we say is that the presence The companies say that we will save the planet. What I'm seeing is, is that the automobile industry is trying to, they're trying to say that. Lastly, if we fit this problem, if today there was no mining industry in Quebec and suddenly and we would discover there's graphite or lithium and all those new lithium, what would the government <clears throat> would they vote laws today? Would they write laws that give total access to the mining industry? I don't think so. I don't think the population would accept that. So thank you. Thank you, Louis. It is now a dolphin's turn to So I will take an angle that talks about biodiversity that we are currently be, that is currently being discussed in COP15. So firstly La Société pour la Nature des Parcs, SNAP Québec, is a nonprofit. is here between 19, since 
is all across Canada. We represent the Quebec chapter. The mission we gave ourselves is to protect biodiversity. So this is in November, 2020, before the uh, policy was announced for critical minerals. You might be able to see the progression here, the major progression of claims in uh, Gaspésie and the uh, bassin -Lain. What we can see in green, those are protected area. By definition, there can't be any mining uh, in those areas. However, in the phonic reserves of uh, Matan and Chichot, they're called reserves, but they are not protected. So there can be mining claims and that's what we're noticing on these maps. So in Gaspésie, So you can see the national park has a lot of claims. I would like to show you We also looked at so what I call the North Coast, but it's the same region that Louis presented in November 2020 compared to 2022. So as you see that those red areas very much progress, they are touching uh, reserve, phonic reserves and regional parks despite what they're they're called reserve they are not protected against mining so this always uh, also in the south of the province like louis said mines are going more to the south but species with uh, climate change are actually going up as well. So for converse, for conservation, there are there's an interface. Once more, I would like to show you the numbers for the protected areas. Those number a little more uh, or a little higher because of the National Park of Montana. This is a network of connectivity. So you see here is, uh, you can see a lot of the Parc du Mont-Tremblant. All around are the ecological uh, corridors. So the mining claims will uh, disrupt these uh, corridors that uh, are mapped here. So Canada uh, said they would uh, get 30% of the ter territory for 2030. There are many projects on the table. S some of those areas have mining claims.
the map is very small, but I would like you to see it. This is a screenshot of uh, the Parc National de Gaspésie. See, there's two little holes in the middle. Those are mining claims. So what it says is that as soon as we have a mining claim, it's impossible to remove that. So that's why the park is around those two spots in the middle. It's impossible to remove that, that designation. So now if we have, uh, if we want to build protected areas, there will be holes everywhere, just like in this uh, demonstration. 16.75% of protected areas currently in Quebec. So there is a disconnect between uh, the plan to protect areas and the mining regime that is currently in place. So, the, so there's 1.6 times more uh, mining claim area than protected area in Gas Museum. Bon. Euh, donc, quand je, comme je vous le mentionnais, les, les arbres de, les, il y a, on a identifié de nombreux euh, milieux d'intérêt pour la conservation, donc tout ce qui est territoire récréatif. Euh, on a aussi les pourvoiries, les aigues. En ce moment, les pourvoiries et les aigues sont quand même en train de prendre un virage un peu plus vert, si on veut, comme réorientent leurs activités sur du tout, de l'écotourisme, euh, des sentiers, d'autres activités, euh, mais sont quand même en proie au clé minier puis à la foresterie également. Euh, je ne vous mentionnerai pas toute la liste, mais aussi il y a eu un gros travail d'identification des milieux humides et hydriques euh, avec la nouvelle loi sur la conservation euh, des milieux humides et hydriques justement dans le sud du Québec. Donc, il y a cet exercice-là de planification territoriale qui est fait. Donc, en ce moment, il y a beaucoup d'efforts qui est mis sur la table de planification, de vision du territoire. Puis, les clés viennent un peu euh, éteindre euh, tout ça. Euh, puis nous, c'est sûr qu'on veut se baser sur les critères de l'IUCN, qui est l'Union internationale sur la conservation de la nature, qui dicte un peu les activités compatibles, le régime d'activité dans les aires protégées, à savoir qu'il n'y a aucune activité industrielle, ceci incluant les mines et la foresterie et les barrages. Ça, c'est des brefs exemples, mais j'aurais pu en servir, sortir vraiment plein. Euh, vous voyez que... So, as you see in la Naudière... There are uh, woodland turtles, so there are claims in their habitat. So it'll be complicated to have conservation measures. The last image is in the Laurentians. So for us, the issue is the uh, incoherence of the visions. Currently with COP15, under which this activity uh, is happening, we presented uh, requests from the civil society in Quebec. We don't have them all. The first one is to live in harmony with nature, live, live in harmony with nature. Et euh, la transition juste et le respect des droits des peuples autochtones et des communautés locales. J'ai extrait les deux cibles qui sont le plus parlantes. J'ai extrait les deux cibles qui sont le plus parlantes dans le cadre d'aujourd'hui. Euh, la cible 1, qui est la planification territoriale. Donc, on veut donner la primauté à la préservation de la biodiversité dans la planification territoriale afin d'empêcher l'artificialisation dans les milieux entreposés, assurer l'atteinte des cibles internationales à Martin de connectivité écologique et de protection. Nous, ce qu'on demande au gouvernement, c'est d'adopter une nouvelle OGAD, qui est un. un une orientation gouvernementale en matière d'aménagement du territoire pour donner la primauté à la préservation de la biodiversité. So we're asking the government to give a primary focus uh, on uh, preserving biodiversity. ...et rééquilibrer les usages de la forêt euh, dans une vision de transition juste entre l'exploitation durable des ressources naturelles à l'extérieur des aires protégées. Euh, donc, l'opportunité, c'est le moratoire dont parlait euh, Rodir, Rodrigue, notamment. Enfin, ma dernière... Euh, Excusez-moi, je change ici. Je change pas. 
<rire> Ma dernière euh, diapositive portera sur... On est aussi dans une crise de la biodiversité. Puis... We're in a biodiversity crisis and a climactic crisis. There are many causes. There's the direct causes like uh, loss of habitat. There are indirect causes to loss of biodiversity. The mining boom is uh, fed by uh, need for mineral, critical minerals. Quebec wants to identify itself as the green battery of the North, but it really goes uh, to the, uh, against nature. And we're asking if we're not maybe moving the problem. We're asking to focus or have a primary focus on preserving nature. We, it, So I would like to highlight an element that happened in the last few hours. Jonathan Wilkinson, minister, made an announcement here at COP15. He said that he would move forward more projects. Vous permettre de comprendre que c'est pas juste en poussant de l'avant puis en, ré en réduisant les délais euh, puis les, les, les questions administratives qu'on va arriver à une meilleure justice. Euh, climatique, une justice en termes de biodiversité, puis surtout une justice envers des relations avec les gens qui occupent et qui habitent le territoire. Euh, ce qu'il faut, c'est de revoir les fondements du régime. Si on pousse le régime à outrance davantage, on va juste accentuer les points de tension. Et c'est, euh, si je voulais juste comme resituer le, euh, la présentation d'aujourd'hui en lien avec l'annonce qui a été faite. Wow. Our friends from Osako will talk to us. Thank you, Rodrigue. Osako uh, represents the interests Water is recognized as being a communal resource that doesn't belong to anyone. It's a collective good, and together we should assure the management. We worked against a few files. Now, Osako is mobilized against mining industry, which is at the scale of the province, one of the biggest uh, Our role to help citizens groups is to give them a national visibility and put forward the environmental protection stakes. Citizens are mobilizing a little bit everywhere in the territory. And we want to demonstrate, give them a platform at the national level. Sometimes we do manifestations and we wonder if it does anything.
So Emil will present the impacts for water. I'm a mining analyst with Osako, and I'm interested essentially uh, the impacts of mining industry on water, uh, the different waterways. I would like today to present you the different implications on the ground of the mining group that we're talking about. Evidently, I would really focus just on the water stakes, but there are tens and tens of uh, issues. I will divide the presentation into big categories. So mining exploitation, uh, we had a good example earlier. It's activities that uh, involves gathering of information on the ground in order to analyze uh, rocks. And to get those uh, data points, we will bring machinery in forest, which will create impacts uh, such as deforestation on its own because the mining equipment uh, must go through. So you have to uh, deforest we drag it through wetlands, through rivers, which hurts uh, those environments. If, if the problem was just uh, a few uh, holes here and there, it, but now they have hundreds and thousands of, uh, of drilling. So, so that becomes very important. So when we get to the mining itself, they're giant infrastructures. Some of these can be a few kilometers in diameter. They're some of the biggest water users in Quebec because of their activities require ex giant uses of water. So their footstep is huge. Everything that's in the way, watersheds, everything uh, will have to be destroyed in, no matter what their efforts are. Furthermore, what we need to know is that a mine uh, generates giant amounts of uh, tailings. In order to get to the to the minerals, we will have uh, many, many uh, mining uh, side effects of tailings. And tailings, what they are is that, uh, uh, there's uh, dry rocks that will be in giant mountains and they're gigantic. Uh, We'll also have muds that are side effects of the treatment of the mineral. They're contaminated by our heavy metals and other substances from the rock. And those me, those are uh, held in uh, pond areas, uh, open sky pond areas known as a... So for the rock, when it rains on it, it will uh, seep out contaminating uh, materials that will go into the uh, waterways. So we have contaminated waters that is uh, that can be released into the environment if it's not controlled. So those are so the retaining structures are man-made, so they are fallible. So an accident in nature can't be controlled and it's very unpredictable. Here we have a few of the big examples that we know of uh, tailing escaping. There's one example in Quebec. So the Chape spill, 
11 million liters of uh, mud and residue uh, went into the watersheds. Also, uh, water is important to us in Quebec. We have currently 22 mines uh, operating in Quebec. And we have 35 projects that are currently being uh, thought of. Those all have uh, tailings areas that have the potential to escape. In the case of the Bassin Versant, let's say there was a spill. This entire watershed, so this is, the, this is a watershed, the south of the Abitibi. All of that goes into the Ottawa River, which goes into the St. Lawrence, which puts at risk the uh, potable water for uh, millions of people in the province. This brings uh, fundamental questions about the projects that we are being pushed to accept. And also makes us think about what we can put for uh, regulation. The question is also important when the uh, minerals that we're looking for aren't as pertinent than what is presented. So there's a lot of claims in this region that involves graphite. So the boom that we're showing today has, uh, has a lot to do with uh, the gold boom that's been going on. So currently in S3, So which we looked at which claim has what type of uh, uh, exploration. So in the Montmégantic area, it's a gold mining stakes exploration. And in Gaspésie, it's a lot of uh, gold, as, gold as well. In the Shikshuk, it's for diverse metals, but also for gold. And what we've noticed, is that three quarters of the projects around uh, is a lot of it is uh, about gold. So gold has a marginal meaning in the, tr the energy transition. So it almost has a uh, no impact on the energy transition. A interesting proportion uh, of these claims uh, belong to people that don't have uh, mining companies. So it's like people that are just sitting in their offices that uh, are staking these and are hoping to sell it later. So when these speculators are come in the territory, it limits uh, protect our ability to protect areas. So this is an ABTV Tennis coming. We have uh, geological formations called eskers. They're equivalents to the uh, St. Lawrence in Montreal region. So these are areas left by the glaciers. So the Esca water that you know probably 
comes from uh, SCA from the IDPD. So there's a fresh water, pure fresh water for the region. We have every reason to want to protect these uh, areas. The municipality of Rockmore has uh, been in the media recently uh, saying that they want to protect these areas. So when we did the request to the Minister of National We wanted them to remove the, the claims and it was refused to us. Saying because it was just an exploration phase. So it's important to act beforehand and protect the ter these territories in order to not have, not be in a situation like we are in Abiti Tiskemai, saying that we should have protected those earlier, those areas earlier. Other than risks of uh, spills in the, these environments, what Emil talked about is the astronomical quantity of the uh, mining tailings. So there are 50 to 100 times more tailings created than the mineral that's actually extracted. So what we've seen recently is the project bloom around Fairmont. So they're, for this project, they want to use about eight, eight lakes to uh, store tailings. Those lakes were identified in the description of the project. Alternative scenarios, So the minister of the environment gave uh, his uh, agreed with the project that it can move forward with the project uh, being the way the, the way it is. So this would create a precedent to the use of lakes to uh, store tailings. And considering the mining boom that we currently have, uh, on top of destroying uh, natural environments, we will be, we want to destroy lakes. It creates a bad precedent. So what we're asking the government is to have a rule that closes uh, the ability to use lakes in order to store tailings from mining. So if you're interested, you can go on the website of Osakul. So the government of Quebec, we asked them to follow up on this, but we didn't get a follow up. Please participate. Your participation is very important. So how do, how do get involved? We have a video online.
the more of us there is, uh, so talk about it with people around you. So many things can be done. Your support is really important for our missions. I will uh, let the word to uh, the Long Point community. I will introduce our two friends that are Cassandra and Jeremy. Jeremy speaks mostly in English. So I will throw again. So Cassandra for you. My name is Cassandra Pisset. I'm the director of uh, natural resources for the first Long Point First Nation. In my department, we're in charge of three units. Concerning forestry and mines. working in the Department of Natural Resources for the First Nation, there's a lot of uh, consultation that come in every day. Most of the time, we don't have time to respond because there's just two of us that work in that department. Uh, most of the time, we send letters for to have a, more time uh, for consultations. Much of the time, we don't have a lot of time to send uh, commentaries, uh, to send out uh, comments about uh, our needs at the Long Point First Nation. For the exploration work, mining exploration, work, we don't receive consultations. Most of the time, we receive emails from industry, from mining industry, concerning uh, uh, foraging that will be done. And we don't have a consultation. We should be cons consulted. What's currently happening on the Long Point First Nation is a rapid explosion of many, many claims and it's affecting the members of our community. It also claims that go up to our cultural site. And every year we go to that site, we go do camping, hunting. We do many uh, traditional activities and all those claims currently are on that site and all around Lexilon and it affects uh, our members in our community. As you see on the photo, that's my family. We participate in uh, traditional activities, hunting, fishing. We also have medicinal, we pick up also medicinal plant every year. Every time we can go on the territory, we're there. It affects me personally and my family to know that there's uh, mining claims all around Lac Simon. We have recently uh, built a camp on Lac Simon. It's, uh, it touches us.
Jerry, would you like to add anything? Now also to know that there could be a mine, an open pit mine uh, close to Lake Simon. It could, it will affect the water, will affect the fauna, the fish. We're always on the lake. It affects us uh, greatly. Et, um, et justement, maybe Jeremy, you want to uh, talk a bit about uh, your occupancy of the of the land. What what you used to to do, um, you know, on this vast territory that you have, uh, and how how does this um, uh, occupation from from the mining corporation uh, is you believe affecting your traditional way of life? Well, I've been uh, exploring the land around my community for over 30 years, I can say. I've been going around with my parents, my father. Well, just just to say the, the effect that's going to happen on the land is I've been working for this company uh, building forestry roads before. And the things I saw working there was, you know, fuel leaks on the land, uh, like uh, hydraulic oil leaking on the land. That can affect it big time, just uh, just that. And to see them build a, a forestry roads too is, uh, it does a big, big damage on the, on the land, you know. And you're very close to because I've I've had the chance to to uh, uh, fight along your side for many years now, and I've heard and witnessed uh, how much your members are um, uh, deeply connected to the land. But could could you, uh, Jeremy and Cassandra, tell us a bit more about uh, the um, elders? connection to the land and what you believe they would they would like to um they would like you and the upcoming generation to uh uh continue to uh um have as a relationship with 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 your ancestral territory i'd say to keep the tradition going of hunting fishing you know and to keep protecting the land yeah. as much as we can and that's what we're here for Mm. is to protect our environment, the waters, you know, the, the, the forests, and our ancestral territory. You know, we need to protect that. And we need to, I know that we need to face that there's mining companies around and we have to do our best to try and to stop that because our land means everything to us. You know, this, it's our, c'est notre garde manger. Mm -hmm. And you are mother and father of six? Yeah. Six. Six. Six, <laughs> six uh, beautiful girls. Uh, and um, you, 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 left, you left them to come here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have any, any words to address them? Maybe wh what are your wishes for, for them, for their, their own children in the years? No. Not the years to come, but the following the case, maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I'll yeah. be here to protect the land for, for the future generation and my grandchildren and great grandchildren. I will be here for that. So you, you can see through their eyes that they still, they also share this connection with the land. Yes. Mm. They love to be on the land, my children. Everywhere we go, we, we bring them hunting, fishing, all over. And um, Cassandra, you, you, tu disais un peu plus tôt que... And Cassandra, you were saying a little earlier that working at the natural uh, resource department, when the mining companies come on the territory, many of them don't consult officially. 
that you have to ask them to consult for to to ask you something there doesn't work no exactly we're not being consulted we're being sent letters saying that they will do exploration on the territory and that there are claims I don't understand why they do that. It's our territory. We should be consulted. We're the ones running after them to have a consultation. They must consult us. We, sh we are running after them. We, we send them letters saying that we're not consulted. Also with the mining and the industry of Sayona, we had to send them a letter for to tell them to stop all the mining uh, on our territory. The mining company, Sayona Mining, is pursuing a project of a lithium mine with an open pit at a few kilometers from the community. Many of the photos you saw on the lake, that's where the members of the community go fish, hunt. That's where their camp is, just next to Lexima. How can you describe the reaction of the... Uh... Uh, community members when they when when you showed them the map of the Sayana mining claims on your ancestral territory located just beside your community so um remember this uh general assembly can you describe us a bit how the members react reacted the members reactions were uh they were jumping off their chairs they were afraid they were they didn't want anything to be done on their territory. Um, they're not for it, they're against it, and they would do anything really to protect the lands. Mm. They're not in favor for that. They were worried, stressed. Yeah. All that because there is no prior consultation and prior consent and companies are not listening to you, in fact. Yeah, they're going ahead. They want to go ahead without our, cons our consent. But in a way, our people, they don't want that. They don't want to have mining and destroying the land and the waters, you know? Mm. Yeah. What would you tell to the Quebec Ministry of, uh, uh, Minister of, natural resources uh, for all those claims that are already there on your land. So what would you, what do you want her to, to do and what message you want to address her for the actual claims that are already there on, on your lands? I think they have to give us a proper consultation and to give us a plan. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Cassandra. Jeremy, do you want to add anything? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks. Uh, maybe round of applause for uh, Cassandra. Merci. Thank you. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres diapos? Also, to tell you uh, that there are different petitions that uh, are just to, to support the Long Point First Nation presented with uh, more details online on the website of Mining Watch Canada. There's also a petition uh, to the left that was initiated by the members of the community of Long Point. It, uh, it's about everything we wanted to show you today. Thank you for your attention. We still have the room for many minutes. So if you have questions, there are two mics left and right. I would like to invite Frederick to go to the mics. And there's also questions that were asked online and my colleague Val will transmit them. If you have questions.
Hello, I work in conservation. Thank you to have shown the uh, enjeu of the activities. I work in the south of Quebec in the Estrie. I have a big sentiment of apartments to conservation. And I was asking myself, what is the power of MRCs and municipalities in regards to uh, mining activities? I would like to let Louis answer. It was my first question. The powers of MRCs do not exist. It's that simple. Municipalities don't have a word to say. The MRCs are municipal governments and do not have any more controls on their territories. The only power that we have is a power of pressure which is what we're currently trying to try to, we're currently attempting. Does that answer your question? Yes, so there's no power. So what they're asking is that they do gain power. It's what they're asking is to grow the territory that's incompatible with the mining industry and to allow local populations to have a say. In the current model, it's the minister that decides. And now they want to have a larger uh, power from the municipalities They want the municipalities to participate in the effort to uh, get a bigger protected area. What was the answer of the government of Quebec following your meeting? So I was a little surprised from uh, how they listened to us. Honestly, we originally one hour, we had one hour to discuss. The Quebec mining industry was just before us. They cut us by 30 minutes because they extended 30 minutes extra. So we only had 30, we thought we only had 30 minutes and she accorded us 75 minutes to discuss. So there's a there's good uh, listening. There are people from Long Point that were present. She heard our message. We, we asked for rapid uh, actions using her powers that she currently has. So it's up to her to confront the lobbying mi mining industry. The pressure is gonna keep going up, but she hasn't, acted. So let's keep pushing. The question concerns the Minister of uh, Natural Resources. So yes, we saw, we had the impression that there's an opening to dialogue. She said that we'd hear something back around January. But what we must understand, it's not just a natural resource uh, file, it's a financial issue. The file is dealt with by Mr. Fitzgibbon. It's the big plan of uh, battery mining, uh, battery production. Mr. Fitzgibbon should be the person who we talk to. Yes, there's the law, but there's also 
uh, the political will. It'll be 150 years soon that uh, the laws that we have uh, exist. So it will require a political will. We can't leave the room here today and think that the National Assembly can't act. An ex-minister of natural resources told us that there's many things we can do. She's currently in the room with us. Hello. I'd like to say thank you for the work that extraordinary work you've done. I had the privilege to be there with the at the meeting with the minister. I would like to drag your attention to two risks that I see following the meeting. What I retain uh, that the minister said, oh, we really have to sensibilities. She said, claims aren't like mines. So we're trying to do information to show what the impacts are and how it, it slows down conservation and it impacts activities of uh, First Nations, but they, they have their arguments to show us that it's not, they're telling us it's not that bad. We just have to be very vigilant with the in the discussions that we have with them. We don't want an information campaign about what our minds. The second important thing, the social acceptability. There are already many letters and consultations that are sent and it doesn't work. The mechanisms that we have currently does not permit us to go to for the local community to put into action the vision that they have for their territory. And it puts workers and workers at the middle of the uh, of the discussion. The workers are not implicated in the discussions at the local uh, on the local level. So in the next weeks, we just got to be very careful. It's not through the mechanisms that we have in place that I see us uh, moving forward from here. So just be careful with uh, the idea of a social acceptability. Thank you. And this works for SNAP Quebec. She was present when we went to meet the minister. I would like to answer with a question, follow up with a question we asked online, that was asked online. Are there jurisdiction that exists where we went on over or beyond the model? Even in our country, in the Yukon, there's a First Nation, Dene, that uh, brought to court the federal government that is in charge of natural resources over there. So they won in court, they won in the appeals court and the Supreme Court refused to listen to the case. So they're 
for some nation was a rewriting of the way of administered a territory. And it's done, like Alice is saying, in consultation with the local communities and the uh, local populations. And it's the only way to bring projects forward that will, that will dealt with justice. It's, it's not just the environment, it's ancestral rights and uh, social justice. I think that everybody here uh, understands that society, human society continues to require certain metals in our life uh, every day for, and for the future. And we also share the understanding that we must reduce drastically our, cons our use of uh, minerals. But for the, one, for the ones that we'll need, then that we will collectively choose to move forward, it cannot continue uh, with the model that we currently have. We must work together and we find justice in those choices that we will be making. I see Camille, I'll ask, or ask a question. Big question. I'm Camille Cloutier, I'm a lawyer with the Long Point First Nation. I would like to add, uh, you were talking about running after mining companies just to tell them that we exist and you're on our territory and the mining activity you're doing, you must ask for our, con our consent. Consent of the community, they must go get it. So that's the message to mining company. It's so what we forget a lot, it's that the government is in charge of uh, what Long Point asked to the government of Quebec was to be uh, to have decision making power for what goes on on their territory, not only consultation. So what impact do the comments we send have? We don't really know usually. There are very clear demands that were formulated by the community in order to uh, make their own impact evaluations of projects and to decide themselves what goes on on the ter territory and to see if it fits on the ambitions of the community. It's an approach that goes further than consultation. So you're very inspiring and no, thank you. Are there any other questions? It can just be comments. If you have personal experiences, what brings you here? I see Gabrielle in the back. That's going to the mic. <laughs> nope. Okay. I know you personally, so. I was just wondering if I was going to go ask a question. I was just asking myself, my name is Gabrielle. I'm a student in environmental science here at the UConn. So sometimes when we have consultations and, and that we're able to have the agree, the communities to agree to the uh, consultations, there isn't always a, a consensus inside the community. Sometimes there can be conflicts within the community. Uh, there's social and economic conflicts, sometimes with the mining projects. So municipalities sometimes uh, receive a lot of uh, there's a lot of money can be sent to municipalities. A lot of money can come to the municipalities. 
So there's tension, there's often tensions that will emerge uh, within the community. I just wanted to uh, say, it's not always the okay of the community to, uh, it was very clear for me, thank you. It, it permits me If you could go back to the beginning and show the uh, signs that we've, uh, so if, yes, there will be conflicts within the communities, particularly when there's already mining activity and there's already money going around. So this creates uh, conflicts. When we get to South of Quebec, there, those are regions where there's no history of mining. What we did at, uh, at my, where I live from the beginning is that we worked in collaboration with municipalities. And what you see there is all the signs that we put up this summer in, municip in the municipalities. There's 22 municipalities, including Montebello, Montbellier. Uh, Lac des Plages as well. All municipalities that said that on their territory, there's five, five foot by six foot that were installed in the communities. They're saying that their territory is incompatible with the mining activity. So Mr. Dergo says that there won't be mines if there's no ex social acceptability. We put up, so we're trying to send a message that there, that people here want a word in want something to say in the in the matter. If you've been implicated in the municipal uh, field, we're trying to spread this. Don't be surprised to see some uh, pop up a little bit everywhere. A few places already started. There will be resolutions that will be voted. So we want to show the municipalities uh, say that they don't have acceptable. Somebody's in front of the mic. I'm coming with a dumb question of the conference. I work for Biodiversité Québec and recently in my uh, learnings, not all protected areas in Quebec have the same level of protection. My question is the following. Do the designation of protected area have the same level of protection against uh, mining claims? If, so there's six different statuses of protected areas. From one to six, It's a gradation. So the rules are clear. There's no industrial activity in protected areas. The issue with mines is that when we, if there are already claims, we can't put a protected area over the claim. So it does a, uh, it, it shows holes in the protected areas like I demonstrated earlier. Creating a protected area comes from three ministers. Environment, the uh, minister of uh, energy and natural resources and the Ministry of Forestry. So, if we want to protect the territory currently, 
and there are territories that aren't claimed yet, and then go for it. This is the time, it's the... So things that are claimed for mining, you have to declaim in order to protect that area. Does that answer the question? Legally on the law on mines, Article 304, permits the Minister of Natural Resources to freeze territories for public interest reasons. So places without cranes, we could put a, a stay. So it's possible to put a stay on sites that the, from the ministry. So there's Article 93 on the law that permits the minister to remove a mining claim. That article is limited to the public use. So for public use, the window is very narrow. So hydroelectricity, building a hospital, the creation of uh, national parks, does not fall into that uh, category. If, if you want to discuss this with the minister, I invite you to our website, Mining Watch Canada, and you can see the justifications. What we're asking is a revision on the laws of mines to make wider the uh, ability to choose what public interest is. So us as well, the interest of uh, public interest uh, should involve uh, protecting nature. Currently, protection of nature is not recognized as a in public interest. Okay. We, uh, there are many questions online, but I'll give priority to people in the in the room currently. So don't hesitate. So, so for people online, we will go back to back. I will name them and people on the panel, I invite you to answer these questions. Some of them I can answer rapidly. So from what I understand, going to uh, electrification of transports, puts a pressure. So this person says the solution could be to reduce CO2s would be to not choose a, maybe not to choose an electric or gas vehicle, but to promote uh, community transportation. And he's saying, yes, absolutely. Does a claim represent a ownership of the land? So, so the claim is a surface of a half square kilometer. So they can, the companies can claim hundreds in the same certain perimeter. It gives them the right to explore, but if they want to go to the phase of exploitation, uh, there's an other step to move into. That's very concrete. If you have more questions, we have uh, documentation. Uh, you can contact us. Now there's a question. That's a good question. 
maybe this is something we share, this uh, realization. How do governments, uh, how do they miss so blatantly? Does, do you have any idea? It's outrageous that we don't respect ancestral right. There's no really answer. The question should be addressed to the government. And speaking of the National Assembly, there's an elected person coming to the mic. Hello. Thank you for this conference. Thank you for being here today. What you've talked about today is extremely important and interesting. I would just like to go back to what you said about today that seemed very obvious. We will be told often to exploit mines that are in the South, that it's good for the economy of Quebec, and it's good also to save the environment uh, in order to further use with batteries. Also, uh, speaking of uh, transport, public transit, we could protect the territory, not only by the just fight that you're fighting on mining claims, but also through the occupation on the territory that goes through uh, public transit. If we make cities that are more compact, more dense, and built more naturally instead of spreading out, we will be contributing to the lowering of uh, CO2's emissions. In other ways, we are protecting our territory by using uh, less. So I think that uh, to fight uh, the uh, urban spread and mining, those are two uh, fights that uh, I care about a lot, and I'm happy that you talked about it today. Thank you, uh, Deputy Gramont. We don't, we don't do a partisan politics here, but we would like to underline that Quebec Solidaire, that uh, your party uh, had an intervention to discuss what we talked about earlier, to have a stay or a moratoire on the mining claims. So we continue to work with all the parties at the National Assembly. So there's a law on urbanism under revision. We're asking of everybody on the territory to create a new vision of uh, the area. Sometimes I speak to municipalities and they say, oh, it's zoned conservation. Will it's, and they wonder, is it still going to be conservation? If there's no follow through, uh, the municipalities don't know. So that's what's missing currently. It's the long-term idea of conservation. We have to seize uh, the moment and rev revise uh, 
everything. We'll talk about the impacts on the water. Uh, Jeremy, so next question is going to be on the impacts of uh, mining activities on water. And uh, the question for you is, we've talked about the impacts of mining on, <laughs> yeah, we've talked about the impacts of mining on lakes, but have you witnessed or are you aware of any impacts on rivers uh, as well? So, um, and maybe it's, it's an open question as well for Long Point First Nation friends to talk more about, you know, the proximity you have with Lake Simar and many lakes and rivers on, on your land that are um, already claimed. So what's the connection you have with water, with, you know, fishing and, and all those uh, natural habitats that can be affected by mining operation? D'un point de vue technique, peut-être aussi plus terrain, so on a technical aspect for Osecor and maybe more for you, uh, friends on, on, yeah, the impacts on water, because you've worked with water first and all those stuff. So what's the relation you have with water and, yeah. Maybe, maybe we can start with long point. Yeah, if you have, no? No. Okay. <laughs> um, that's, that's correct. If you have anything to, to say, that's fine. Yeah. Otherwise we'll switch to, uh, what's so cool. Euh, ben, la réponse est évidemment oui. Est-ce que je devrais y aller en anglais? Ou, euh, ça... Es-tu capable? <laughs> devrait aller, ça va être un peu baragouiné. But yeah, the answer is yes, obviously, because uh, as soon as we have a, a mining project uh, starting on the land, uh, obviously we're, we're, we kind of have to destroy, like, at least partly a few rivers like to to dry them up just to make sure that the the pit himself and the mine and, and all the rest will be uh, dry enough for the operation so uh, like in most cases and not in if not all case uh, a mine will have to dry the land all around the site itself himself uh, and it will like destroy uh, a few rivers here and there uh, and then we have like uh, a few cases like uh, the one uh, the, the the mine of Tata Steel uh, around Shefferville where uh, we had a, a basin of, of, of uh, used water that uh, broke and gave a, something like what I presented to you uh, exclusively with uh, contaminated water but it went right directly in the rivers and uh, up to now it's not even repaired so four years later it's not even repaired and it brings lots of contamination to the waters so even if the river itself is not destroyed like all the fishes and and, and life in the river in itself uh, dies pretty much or is affected by those uh, those uh, accidents uh so yeah that's uh, I, I will say <laughs> frankly yes there are other impacts thanks emil i was not aware you were speaking that good english thanks <laughs> it's appreciated for long point friends uh, for sure uh you want to add anything you're very not obligated it's just open to you Okay, um, the impact can like uh, like Emil was saying it it can impact our our uh, fauna, all our fish and and the berries, everything that's surrounded with water. It could be affected their medicinal plants and everything. So yes, it can give a really bad impact to the water. So. Miigwech, thanks. Um, donc. Uh... Alors, so we have a few more questions, and that will uh, be it. So there's a question here. What about mining claims in metropolitan areas, in wooded metropolitan areas? So it's essentially the same issue everywhere. If there's no protection, 
section of the territory. If you are worried about uh, wooded areas in the metropolitan area, uh, it's, yeah, it's an example for the metropolitan region. There are currently rules that permit that uh, does not uh, permit us to protect uh, Mount Rigaud in the Montreal region. The MRC is trying to protect that region in order to do preservation and the minister's refusing to exclude that zone of the territories that could contain mines. So it gives you an idea of the scale. If we can't protect Mount Rigaud, then how can we protect the rest of Quebec? I would also like to add that if you listen to the, conf the press conference Saturday morning with an engagement to protect 30% of the territory. So it'll certainly won't reach that number. We have very good allies at the municipal level. Now, interesting question. The responsible battery. Should we join with uh, industry for responsible? Uh, uh, so I'll talk for my industry, Mining Watch Canada. We don't believe much in uh, responsible mining. The mining industry in itself will not uh, give itself norms to slow down its uh, ability to mine. They do this in order to uh, do a good image, but uh, it's very hard to Is it possible? That's a good question. Often people think that environmental norms will stop the industry and their uh, and the uh, economic development of the province. It's true in some instances, in some places that we say no. Uh, putting stricter laws will permit to develop an expertise for the protection and environment and the biodiversity. Those, uh, those opportunities are jobs, are job creation in that field. The more we'll be ambitious in the protection of the territory, more we will develop the, these competences in environmental protection. This can be an opportunity. to do a little bit of uh, talking about human rights. As long as you uh, mining industry have control over the land, we are taking away from Quebecers and First Nations the right to their own land. We're removing the ability for local populations to have a vision on their own territory, long-term vision when at any time you can be expropriated from your, uh, from your land. I live up north of La Naudière where we live in the impact. Some people that have been there for 100, 200 years just found out that their land is uh, going to be used. So it's really hard to find out that finally we don't own our own land. It's not just mining industry. There's other sectors that do the same thing. And we want to control, we would like to control what does on our own territory, what happens in our own territory. Last question from the internet.
Uh, the answer is yes. Si oui, où, uh, where, and under what condition? I hope the presentation today Nobody today said that we're anti-mind. I don't know people that are anti-mind. I am not anti-mind. All we want is a viable planet. And in the current rules that we have, it's impossible to make it. Uh, when we let ourselves be governed by multinational corporations that have nothing to do with social justice, uh, if you're interested with uh, for more details we can uh, review the recording maybe a last round of the table i'm done uh, thank you I'd like to applaud everybody here The scars on our territory will be permanent. And, so thank you, uh, thank you for coming. If you would like to to be involved uh, more, uh, there's always room for that. I would like to remind uh, that in Quebec we have a population that's uh, knowledgeable about uh, mining in a general manner. We have people that are able to take decisions that are knowledgeable and it's time to profit from that and to review the colonial laws that uh, we work with today. And to go back to our way of moving forward. like to orient our society in the direction that we would uh, want to take for, and review. Uh, thank you for being here, very appreciated. Thank you. I endorse all of that. I think that today in the context of COP15, we should be ambitious and have a new vision for the territory and that the current way we're seeing it is not part of that. We need to protect biodiversity. There's major stakes with uh, global warming. So let's be judicious and re review our way of doing things so we can protect our environment together. And I would like to finish by saying that the mobilization that I talked about could you show this slide? I believe in it profoundly. We're very engaged. What you see here is a photo of uh, people that are engaged, that are at the forefront of the mining, the files on mining in our region. They are mobilized and that show you what it can give to be mobilized. This is a, these are the signs that we have at the beaches. This was last summer. Since then, it's major what has happened and then it's major what will be coming up. We 
saw some mobilizations that uh, helped us uh, come out of a uh, shale gas. And we have mobilizations that are coming up for uh, everything that's called minerals. And it's very promising. I want to uh, thank you to have taken the time to listen to us. And I think that uh, we are able to continue to protect the territory. Thank you. I'd like to say um, the damage in our territory will be uh, permanent as well. Miigwech. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Bonne fin de journée. Attention, Arthur, là, vous